Hello? Donc, euh, on est très content d'accueillir Alba Coel ce soir euh, pour cette soirée autour de, de son œuvre poétique et, et filmique euh, qui sera divisée en trois parties. D'abord, une, une lecture de ce texte euh, d'environ une demi-heure. Ensuite, la projection de The Invasion of Thunderbolt Pagoda, qui est le film qui vient d'être euh, édité enfin en DVD après 30 ans, euh, passé dans, dans le mystère et, et perdu pratiquement. Euh, une projection qui sera accompagnée par Sunburn Hand of the Man. Et enfin, une projection de Brain Damage, qui est un nouveau film à montage euh, conçu à partir de chutes euh, de, 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 de Invasion of Thunderbolt Pagoda. Euh, un film qui sera accompagné en live par euh, euh, Will Swofford et des membres de son Hand of the Man. Voilà, je pense que vous allez comprendre français, mais sinon, euh, rapidement, en néerlandais. Dis, mais un age privé, c'est un blague, on a un avant à la fin, et son Hand of the Man, aussi, naturellement. Dis, le schedule de uh, the evening est first um, lesing van à la fin, et daarna brain damage. Open screen, een projectie met uh, live muziek door uh, members, uh, leden van uh, Sunburn of the Man en uh, Will Swafford. Voilà. En we have a troop of monkeys coming also. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, I don't know, I was writing this thing last night at 4 o'clock, or in the morning, at 4 o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep. So I thought I would read that to, for some reason. Uh, Brussels on the 24th of September 2006, after ordering some 40 poems for a too long reading, unable to sleep a second straight night, as I remember the poem about Dutru, the child murderer pervert, the poem I wrote while the whole country was inflamed, marching in white to protest the crime. It was published in an issue of Longshot in the US, whatever, blah, blah. Uh, I'd like to recover that poem, and hopefully I will, but I was thinking about it because I thought I would read it here tonight, but sometimes, you know, you fill notebook out, you know, because if I lost this notebook... So, anyway, uh, I don't get paid by the minute, you see, and I make my poems out of suffering and illumination. I open my notebook just to make this simple point, and there you have it, or more likely you never will. I, too, was impacted by the waves lapping the shore of Ostend. That's where that march started, I think, that I was talking about. What happened to, to, to Dutroux? Is he at least in jail, or is he just on vacation? <laughs> well, they, they give those people a lot of money because they don't have an, uh, another job. Oh, <laughs> OK. Well, I don't know if I put these poems in an order that I will find out what I'm doing, but I think so. Okay. Everything is too big to manipulate under this microphone. Okay. So, uh, I hope you will understand enough English and it won't seem too boring. I'm going to read uh, uh, poems in a certain kind of an order that I put together last night which is a different kind of reading from the one that I usually give. There are days when you don't know the date, you are not even sure of the month or the year, and most any poem you read seems like just so much bullshit, full of mooings and romantic garglings, when what you need is a few words which can deal accurately with the everyday terror of living. And as to the flames leaping up from the Middle East, where are the deal makers who would consider a few hundred lives worth the price to barter three captive soldiers for 25 women prisoners and an acre of land? Are not the overflowing tears of the human soul enough to gain the attention of fanatics spent on revenge in this world of lascivious dealers of death? As you notice, I'm not saying who the people are who are the lascivious dealers, but I think it's pretty safe to say that it's true all around. Perhaps there will be less luminous serenity. Perhaps there will be grace. That's a quote from Eugenia Nesco. 
Okay, so okay, I'll read this other thing that happens to be written on the same page. That same old jazz on the soundtrack makes the old hipster feel at home, as if something is really about to happen, like life before we lived it. Now on a night without expectation, uh, one tries to get loose enough to surprise the guarantee of your absence. In an empty city, biting the wind, or the illusion of a prayer wheel spinning out of control. Ta da! Then uh, this is some little thing I wrote to myself, uh, which I have a deep affection for. For all the glory attached to the idea of light, let me say today the more than indictable light. For it is the night which is unindictable, the lunar cloak of protection from garish reality. It is in the dark that seas germinate. Look for gold in the night. When your heart stops, you will know that without poems, you will not feel right. In the light of day, you will find another kind of darkness, the kind that can make you lose your way. This I will be read, okay. Well, it seems very confusing. I think I just didn't find, ah, oh, now I see. ta -da! I am not a beat, though I have performed with them all, etc. I am an electronic multimedia shaman, a Naga hipster, an Akashic agent, an outlaw of the spirit. I am the one out of a hundred. I am the bearded iris, the flower of chivalry with a sword for a leaf and a lily for a heart. I am the rainbow, a hybrid of celestial hues, blue in the end, a message between gods. I am your shadow in the darkness, your reflection in the mirror. I am the jack in your box. This is a poem written some years ago in Nepal. Imagine one day your neck torn as if by accident. Imagine me under a pile of debris from an old love letter. Change of season. To give the effect without mentioning it. How to hide you in a poem. The poet lays on the spell, creating definite concavities. The lingering effect of spilled perfume invokes a multitude of empty rooms where once we lay entwined in the underwater boudoir of the mind. That gate of Ishtar, now ruined, some piece of wall in bulk, bear testament to the handiwork of time. Witness what transpires between wind and stone, lovers who at last do merge and disappear, and we who see each other among the stars, who will know or care when wind encounters empty wind, what wildness lies still hidden here. O oh, unheard tongue of poetry, sing the sudden rush of air. Sing, sing of the golden lair. Dreams of turban singers droning the sounds of the universe in deep voices, buried up to their necks in sand. I am looking from above on an illusory parapet Suddenly I want my camera, but it isn't with me. Marina says, I went to Abaton, the first of the imaginary places. My blood sugar keeps climbing, even in sleep. When I wake, I think of death and take a shot of insulin before breakfast. This uh, one is called Something I've Been Thinking a Lot of, About and it was written basically on the new year 2005. Something I've been thinking a lot about. Already enlisted in the tournament of shadows which no living soul has ever won, my throat full of 9-11, which likely will kill me before the news of hundreds of thousands of tsunami victims has been fully exploited, or the innocent Iraqi civilian dead are even counted. A life lasts but an instant, nor does its light last long enough to illuminate man's way 
in this dark world. Already the beaches are being made ready for future tourists from the blind hell of society's maternity wards. Yet the sun shines through the window, casting globes of dancing light over the blank pages, an invitation to the celebration of a new year. The first day born of an ancient ignorance, conceived in brightness, without which no shadow could flicker or any harm be done. Now we come to the test of gold. There is a seesaw battle up and down the field. Even though the feet of enlightenment did not move, the great ocean overflowed. The bowed head looked down from the heavens. Will it be for me then to finish the poem? In fact, there is no finishing, though there will always be continuation. Going from one to the other, the seesaw battle will be waged until time itself is done leaving space the only winner on the Akashic ground. Now we are in overtime. <clears throat> I was uh, thinking about the Bible somehow, and I uh, wrote a poem called Extraction. The only real experience occurs when you are alone, not when you are part of a crowd. When you come alive, it is in the likeness of spring. One day you will eat the blue. <coughs> then you will know. When it is all over, the word will remain. So it is with poetry as with prophecy. Praise will issue from the mouths of strangers. Then in the land of promise, the real struggle begins. This is called God's Bounty. My heart is a drum which keeps beating in a rhythm which makes me crazy. The phone rings and I don't recognize the caller. I am receiving deliveries I never ordered. Hafiz tells me that this is God's bounty. If we knew everything before it happened, would we ever seek the unknown or discover how to lose ourselves in clouds of confusion? Still, fear comes unbidden while we wait endlessly for what will never come. Through the window of your heart, you can see both within and without. I'm going back to bed. See, that's the kind of poems I write. Lately. Every once in a while they change, you know? And this is representing a change after a stroke I had, which is what is making it very difficult for me to walk and where I of a cane, did I lose it? No, there it is, yeah. Walking around Brussels in the daytime uh, to the Sablon, uh, past uh, the Grand Place, uh, over to the Bedford Hotel is uh, really an ordeal for me. You don't know how amazing it is that I got myself here from uh, 160s and Broadway, but uh, so, so be it. Unshriven to the end, I go as a poet to the straight gate where no one can accompany me. Narrow as a single bed, upright as the path. Once grand boulevards beckoned with the fanfare of every day. Goodbye then to itchy skin and to the carapace which served to get me to the door of spent lotteries, where I leave shadow and echo behind. These words a sign that once I too came this way. To come again would be superfluous. <laughs>